This is a research on area classification, specifically on the iteration and implementation of area classification AI for enhancing civil development. Hello, my name is David Ajao. My name is L Bates. I'm Nisha Bandari. Hi, my name is Jackson Choi. I'm in grade 12 and I'm from Greenwich, Connecticut. We'd like to start off our presentation by giving some background information on our project. The textbook definition of urban development is the planning and executing of a city that will increase social and economic growth. Area classification is looking at an area and giving it descriptors. This can include how much water is in the area, how many trees, or in our case, whether the photo is of an urban, suburban, or rural area. This can be done on the Globe Observer app or website, or an individual can do it elsewhere. What is Braille's? Braille stands for Building an Infrastructure Recognition Using AI at Large Scale. Braille sticks images and satellite data and outputs building features. This is especially useful for our project because we're determining urban sprawl based on images. In the past few years, urbanization has increased at different rates throughout the U.S. due to stark differences in socioeconomic levels in different areas. In order to maximize the quality of life, predicting developmental and civil data is really important for urban planners. Our goal was to train an AI mo model that would be able to predict urbanization trends based on photos taken by citizen scientists and satellites, as well as census data. Our objectives can be split up into three parts. The first was collecting training data from our cohort's globe observer photos so that we could manually label them as rural, urban, and suburban. And the next part was actually training a model based on our data so it could classify an inputted photo as one of those three categories. And then currently we're working on applying certain Braille's functions combined with corresponding census data to generate more information. Now for our methodology, the first thing that we did was find and label 50 photos in each of our categories. Then we trained our model with a TensorFlow library. And then after this, we manually labeled which photos would be fit for Braille's and which weren't based on which ones had a clear building in them. And now we're working on supplementing our current model with the fine-tuned Braille's occupancy classifier and yearbook classification. And we're making a function that outputs a score from one to 100 representing the urbanization level. And based on this, we'll also supplement some time series images from Landsat and socioeconomic data in order to plot current trends and predict future numbers, specifically looking at medium, in median income level and population. Utilizing TensorFlow, our convolutional neural network intakes sample images and cross-references the images with our data sets of categorized images. It then produces a confidence level associated with each group's comparison and returns the classification with the highest accuracy, as well as the confidence score associated with it. On the left, we have our model's confusion matrix, which determines the accuracy of our trained model. For model validation, we tested 36 images for each category sourced from publicly available data sets to avoid any bias. The highest accuracy of 97% was found under the urban classification, likely due to the distinct nature of the architecture and development found in urban areas, while our weakest classification was found in suburban data and was found to be 81%. On the right, we have another data set, but our final general result was that our model is 90% accurate. Closely associated with the model accuracy, our model's confidence saw urban and rural areas be easier classified while suburban areas lagged behind. Given our small sample size due to the time limitations and planning caused by the unfortunate weather, we predict our model's accuracy could rise quickly given more sample data. Suburban data likely was harder for our model to distinguish as many of the features of suburbs such as greenery and architecture are often found both in urban and rural areas. Finally, when selecting photos, we try to use a wide variety of examples from each category, such as suburban roads and rural parks, as opposed to a civic house and other architecture for better model practicality. Overall, the AI model we created using TensorFlow and Brails was very accurate for classifying the photos into the categories of urban, suburban, and rural. We can see that it was le more accurate for urban and rural, at, but less accurate for suburban. And as David mentioned, the reason for this is that suburban is literally suburban, meaning it is in between rural and urban. And so the line differentiating the three starts to blur. The next step for us would be to add in the satellite data and photos, as well as the census data to further train the AI. We would also set stricter parameters for suburban images to increase the accuracy. The product we have created, it can be utilized by urban planners and designers to create short and long-term projects based on the needs of the city and the AI and the data this AI model provides. The photos utilized in this project came from the Globe Observer app. And we'd also like to give a huge thank you to all of our amazing mentors. Thank you to Andrew Clark, Dr. Rusty Lowe, Peter Nelson, Cassie Soffing, Royba Adhi, and Osemarat Ojifa. And these are the many sources that we used. Thank you so much for listening to our presentation and we hope you have a great rest of your day.